Hello and welcome to 31 Days with Mary. Today is day 30 and I want to start by appreciating every one of you, appreciating you for taking out your time to follow on this journey that has led us to today. Um, so many people have joined uh, my posts since this began and um, I can count about 200 or so new followers and I've had some personal discussions with some of you and prayed with some of you and I still pray, I'm still praying for some of you too and it's been a very beautiful journey so I want to say thank you very very much. Um, I noticed the sharp decline in the number of people who started and then those who continued. Uh, I want to say probably it's because of the cost of data uh, many times and many other reasons. I know, of course, some people have gone back to work and all of that, so it's difficult to keep up with um, posts on social media, but I want to appreciate you for making out the time, and I hope you also follow subsequent series as they come along and as we share the Word of God and try to encounter God in His Word and in His sacrament. Um, what I want to leave you with today is something very important, and I want you to take it to heart, and it is the fact that no two relationships are the same. And that applies also to our relationship with God. My relationship with God is mine. It is not yours. It cannot be yours. Your own relationship with God is yours. It can't be mine. And it's important that you understand what your own unique relationship with God is. We see that very clearly in the readings of today. In the Gospel reading, John, John paints this beautiful story of Jesus and Peter sharing a moment. And of course, Jesus had already asked Peter, Do you love me? Three times. And after that, Peter turns back and sees the beloved disciple standing there. And he asks Jesus, what about him? And Jesus says, what about him? What if I want him to stay here till I come back? What is that to you? You are to follow me. But of course, the news went out that Jesus said, this young man is not going to die. But that was not what Jesus said. Jesus was basically speaking to Peter. But then Peter was still distracted. It just shows you the humanity of the disciples. They were very human. They are as human as ourselves. But their relationship with Jesus raised them to a whole new level of experience. And that's what Jesus wants for you. He wants you to understand that your unique relationship is one that is supposed to make you into the best version of yourself. So what is Jesus calling you to? What are the aspects of your life that he wants to, to change, to transform, to make anew? What are those aspects of your life where he wants you to use your gifts, your talent, your disposition, your patience, your virtues, whatever. What are the things that he wants you to do as a person, as a unique instance of his grace? Because that is what we are here for. We are here to make an impact for God. Not for ourselves, not so as to become popular or famous or renowned, but so that we can make a unique statement that God is real and God is active in our world. So it's important that you see this as the point of departure for your life and the point where you yourself realize that your life means more than just you living and existing for the here and now. We see also a unique expression of this relationship in the life of St. Paul. St. Paul's letter, I mean the Acts of the Apostle comes to an end with St. Paul's arrival in Rome and then he is welcoming visitors to see him. He was wearing chains in his own private lodging but he was, he was not even paying attention to what the Jews themselves have done to him, but the fact that he is meant to preach the word of God, whether free or in chains. It's important, like I said, it's eternally important what you see your relationship as, with Jesus as. Uh, I, I saw the news of a, of a young man, a young Canadian Christian music artist, who suddenly says, you know what, I'm no longer Christian. I, I, I don't want to pretend anymore that I believe in Jesus Christ. I no longer believe in Jesus Christ. And that for him was his new purpose. That is what he wants to put out there as the truth. But a lot of people go through doubt, doubts. A lot of people go through moments of haziness in their faith. But that you don't see them speaking about that as if that is now the crowning point of their life. Because our life is a journey. Okay? There are moments of joy, there are moments of pain, there are moments of doubt, there are moments of confusion. But in all of this, Jesus is with us. The disciples themselves had to go through moments of doubt when Jesus was captured in the Garden of Gethsemane. They all took to their heels. Peter had to go through his own when he had to deny Jesus three times. Paul had to go through his own when he, when he suffered shipwreck, when he, when he was stoned and almost died. 
Each of us has to go through those difficult moments, but our relationship with God has to continue. We have to keep trusting that God has a bigger plan for our lives. I pray that as we come to the end of this 31-day journey, that God will reveal to you what your unique plan is and that you will continue to journey with God, not minding all the obstacles and the difficulties you're going to encounter. It's important, too, that as you journey, hold the hands of our Blessed Mother. She has continued to offer us her maternal intercession, and she continues to intercede for us. And that is why we always journey with her in the prayers of the Rosary, through her joyful, her sorrowful, her luminous, and her glorious mysteries, so that we make those mysteries our own, so that in the joys, in the, lumin in the, in the illumination or enlightenment of our own lives, in the sorrows, and in the glory, that we experience both in this world and that we are going to experience in the world to come, we are always united with Jesus. And that also reminds me of a line we always say at Mass, the doxology, when the priest lifts the chalice and the, and the, and the consecrated host and says, through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever, to tell us that we are always on this journey with Jesus in union with the Holy Spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit. May God continue to enlighten you and give you the grace to follow Jesus every step of the way until the end. And this is where I impart upon you my special blessing. May God be with you and bless you. May He continue to strengthen you and grant you all your heart desires. May He see you through every challenge. May He bring you from every doubt into the light of His knowledge and wisdom. And may God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I'll see you tomorrow where we round off this 31-day journey with Mary and then We'll start a new series. God